We started, um, we started on the project in September, so working, oh, I entered the classroom and I entered as a student. So I sat in the class for a month, just taking notes, and uh -huh. it was the math and science class in the seventh grade. And um, after about a month, kind of being in the class, observing and getting to know the students a little bit, I um, presented different ideas, the notes that I was taking in the class, and one of those ideas was The Powers of Ten by Charles and Ray Eanes, the film made in 1977 that shows a, um, an exploration into space and then into the, um, the microscopic level. Um, we then took that general idea and started exploring mm -hmm. it together with the kids, like how can we visualize yeah. this crazy idea. But we'd have a map of the city on the, on the wall. Yeah. Um, that didn't seem to make as much sense. The map mm -hmm. of the world made more sense. Genius, especially like we seen the design on the computer, but it's nothing like seeing it on the wall, like seeing it in person in real life and having a part in it. So it's definitely major. I tell them all the time, it's genius. He <laughs> must be very happy. And it's educational for the kids as well and the parents. He made like an examples of like a breakdown in the in the front where you can look at and it tells you like the galaxies this is the stages of the moon is like educational for those who don't know because there's some people like what is it like they don't know what it is but then he has a guide for them so it like educates the adults and the children at the same time so it goes beyond just the design it's smart and they gave Ben a, uh, he got a geek award. Got some people that recognize how he used science, incorporate science with his art. So that's a like proof that it's smart. It's captivating and gripping when they come, to, you know, when especially when the kids first seen it. It was a couple people, more than one, many. I'm gonna say like ten that I heard was like, is it a new school? Like they believe, it looks like a new school. Yeah, they yeah. believe that it was a new school, like it was built. Like, and I'm like, that's amazing that you think that this was a whole new school. Right? It, make, it makes it look new. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that, that just lets you know the power of it. We presented the design to the school district in January. So I started in September. Uh -huh. We had a general concept in January. We had our trees drawn and that's about it. And that front area, kind of a general idea of yeah. what it would look like. Um, once we got the approval for that one section, mm -hmm. we began painting that section. So all the drawings were scanned into the computer and then printed out on a cloth yeah. that had the outlines of Is the designs. Is on a cloth? It's on a cloth then adhered like wallpaper to oh, the wall. Oh, so it's done on cloth in parts. Yep. Like, so it's 500 sheets that are 5 foot by 5 foot. Is that cloth uh, not synthetic fiberglass? It's cloth? like a non-woven... Um, synthetic Cause, fiber. Because it almost looks like it's painted on the wall, but it yeah. would be very hard to do that. It becomes, since it's non-woven, the primer soaks into it, and it yeah. becomes like an acrylic sheet. Oh, yeah. So it, the, it's the, whatever the polymer that holds the cloth together is there, and, and then the, the seam. The, and you can see the seams if you look yeah. at them. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We've been installing for two months. Oh, so we so started. Been, what kind of glue do you It's a in? acrylic gel. Yeah, so and then it gets painted over, no, it gets a, um, not a shellac, but... We have a sealer that a we put sealer. On. Yeah, so we'll put a few, a few coats of sealer on it when we're all done. It, it looks, it's exquisite. <laughs> okay. You're smiling. I am. That's great. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do. Favorite? Yeah, I love being outside painting. It doesn't happen often enough. Um, yeah, the last outside project I worked on was um, down at the Oval with Candy Coated.
Oh, <laughs> fine tuning work. It's a lot of fine tuning. You're like correcting. Oh, there was just a little, she noticed actually there's a little triangle missing. So oh, where? we're kind of working oh. together. Well, now you can't see it. Oh. <laughs> I, get, I have it all uh, sort of masked now, but yeah, it definitely takes the team to sort of get all these details. Eyeball all these little details, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't see it. in the city. Every young person deserves to have art education and anything less than that, quite frankly, is absolutely unacceptable. I am here to tell you that. We are on a mission. We want our next generation to be resilient and persistent. We want them to take an idea and be able to develop it. We want them to understand that when it comes to hard problems, our traditional interventions fail us and you can never count out the role of innovation and creativity. Look at all these creative thinkers in this audience. They deserve to have a world-class opportunity in the arts, and if we can play a role with an extraordinary principal, with fantastic teachers, with a great school, with, a, with an absolutely dedicated community, and a terrific teaching artist, artist and muralist like Ben Volta, we have a formula for success. So I applaud all of you. And finally, this is, so this is what happened. So over the course of a year, Ben Volta worked with the seventh graders in Miss Cosville's uh, science class and Miss Wood's math class. And we worked during the school day and after school. And together, together, this is really a collaborative project, the young people and Ben envisioned this masterpiece that you see before us. Now, I love this part when I get to introduce the artist. So let me tell you a little bit about Ben Volta. Ben Volta is somebody who has extraordinary talent. We can see that, right? But what you also should know is that he's an amazing teaching artist. And he's an extraordinary muralist. And he's gifted when it comes to working with the community. Because to be a muralist is really hard. It's really hard. It takes a lot of courage and tenacity and perseverance. And you have to listen to a lot of opinions and sometimes it's hot and sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's windy. And you work with kids and he works in prisons and he works with people coming out of prison and he works in neighborhoods. He works with everybody. And he does his work with incredible grace and kindness and patience. He cares deeply about this world. He understands that art is essential to our lives and he is determined to provide it to young people and Philadelphia in the best, most respectful way possible. I have to say it is one of the great privileges of my job that I get to meet with, get to work with people like Ben. I have learned so much from Ben about the importance of art education, about the potential of merging subjects together, about the fact that when you stretch art as far as it can go, you can actually stretch it further. Art can change the world. And Ben Volta demonstrates that every day. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> so I guess I'll try to tell the story a little bit about how this happened. Jane called me last summer and said, we have a school for you. So it was so exciting, and um, you know, I Google mapped it right away, and, and no, I hadn't spent much time in Mantua before now. I've spent in many communities all over the city, but um, never been in, uh, done a project in Mantua. And um, I said, I asked the art, ed I asked Yolanda, and I asked the art ed department, can I be a student for a month? Can I go to the class? Can I go to Ms. Costco's um, um, science class? Can I go to Ms. Wood's math class? Can I sit in the back of the class? Can I be a student? 
and I tried to pay attention as best I could. Seventh grade math is still really hard. So I still was seeing my mind wander away like we do. And I was doodling and taking notes. And for the month, I took notes. I showed up, and um, I tried not to be an, um, an adult. I tried to just take notes and think of all the creative ideas that I thought, how can we merge these two classes? How can we merge art and science together? And I took notes, and then, you know, in October, I started sharing those artists I thought of, different ideas. And two or three weeks into showing those ideas, I got some response. The eighth grade, you know, or seventh grade at the time, you listened to me. You gave me, you listened. Um, but there was one week, I think three weeks in, I showed this wonderful film by Charles and Ray Eames that I thought was a great, you know, it's a great exhibit of math and science. It's called The Powers of Ten, made in 1977. And if you guys remember, I, I was giving it a disclaimer. I was like, it was made in 1977. It may be really boring. Please, it's only 10 minutes long. Try to pay attention. <laughs> Everybody, I showed the film, and the film, if, if you've seen it before, it starts with a couple on a, having a picnic in Chicago, and it starts 10 times 10 times 10 meters, and it blasts off into space, just showing, going farther and farther off into space, showing Chicago, um, showing um, a map of the US, showing the Earth, going all the way into the galaxies, and then flying back, going into the skin cells of the couple on the, on the um, um, having a picnic, and going into the, the DNA, into the atoms. And I was wa we were watching the film, and everybody, I don't know if you all remember this, but everybody was silent. And you weren't sleeping. <laughs> you were watching the film, which was so cool. And afterwards, I asked, I thought a little weird, do we, is this the idea? Do we want to show somehow show the universe on the school? And everybody, I, I kind of had this like little, I felt like it was the only the first time, maybe the only time I had everybody. Everybody was like, yeah, which was so cool. Um, I was given, Principal Wallace was so gracious, he didn't give me any ideas. I met with him and he said, oh, it, McMichael goes green. That's the theme, I don't care what you do, McMichael goes green. I was like, all right, that, that's, a, that's a focus. So we took this idea, Michael goes green. Kiko, thank you so much. You, you, you gave us, I, I was getting the, a little bit of feedback from you as well, saying maybe, you know, thinking about conservation and energy conservation and, and efficiency and I, and I was just, I, I interpret that as like thinking of like how is, is nature efficient and thinking about that. So I took these three ideas, the powers of 10, this great video, and um, McMichael goes green. And we just said, we just started meeting in the morning and after school and saying, okay, what do we do? How do we visualize this? How do we start sketching this out? We began with a Google map over Mantua saying, where is Mantua? Where is McMichael in relation to the, to the city, in relationship to the world? We quickly noticed the, the Schuylkill River and 76 cutting it off in a way from Fairmount Park. And then on the other side, um, University City with all, and the Science Center with this like powerhouse of, of education. And we were thinking, how can we bring the park a little bit closer? And how can we bring University City a little closer? And how can we visualize this in some way? Um, so we started with the park. Started with the park drawing trees. So you can see the trees that are over there are the first part of the mural. We drew them, but we didn't just draw trees. It was math class, so we got out rulers. And starting at the zero, started measuring our branches to make sure they went slender and slender as they grew up. And we could check our work. So you would make a drawing, check to make sure your branches went up. Um, and then I had just finished a project with mural arts inspired by neurons and brain science. And it was really great to see how the dendrites that kind of come off the nucleus of a neuron look a lot like trees. So we started drawing neurons using the same formulas. Um, and we just really kept going on from there. Every, every Tuesday and Wednesday, every morning, in class, and then after school, two days a week, for the entire year, we were designing and painting. In January, we presented to the school district. February, we began, began, we began painting. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome honored parents, students, teachers, local representatives, community supporters, and stakeholders. We are, pr we are proud to present to you the mural, Micro to Macro, to which we have contributed. On behalf of our design team, Mr. Wallace, and everyone here, we would like to say thank you. This mural was completed weekly during science and math class, as well as after school. This was a cross-curricular project in which we learned about the powers of 10 and how they apply to our studies in math and science. We believe that this mural has impacted many students. Thanks to the help of the mural arts program, PICO, and Drexel University, it has provided a sense of accomplishment to our classmates and us. This mural has made the school look much more beautiful, and that sense of pride runs throughout our building. 
We would like to thank Mr. Bolton, who is always more than patient, for, <laughs> for providing the opportunity, and Ms. Monet for helping with after school program. We love the juicy cookies, by the way. <clears throat> what, what was that? We would also like to thank the rest of the community who helped us complete the moon. With all the support of our families, teachers, classmates, friends, and community, we have not have made it this far. So thank you, everyone, for the phenomenal work. Thank you.